Oh, I like it. Hey, I'm just thrilled about something that God's doing in this house. A number of years ago, the Lord began to break out from this place and send us out into the world. We began a work in Tahiti and then Japan and then the Philippines and, and uh, in Chile, and it just began to spread. And before you know it, we were in 13 different nations. And a few months ago, the Lord spoke to me and said, Son, if you're going to see 200 extensions, you need somebody who's going to carry that burden and make it their burden. And you're going to need to have someone who will visit the places and be your eyes and your hands and your heart. And so I prayed, and I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to appoint Pastor Janelle to be that person. And so I approached her, and she said, Dad, she said, she said, for many years the Lord has laid the nations on my heart. Well, she just came back from the Philippines. They visited 16 of our extensions in the Philippines. They spent most of their time on buses, eight-hour trips all night. And uh, I'm glad she came back. She ate lots of different kinds of food. I asked her if she ate any balut, but she said no, she didn't. But she did one time when she was a kid. I ate when I was 13, and it scarred me for life. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not into balut. Anybody know what balut is? Balut. balut. See, all you Filipinos know what that is. <laughs> it's an unhatched chicken, and it's, uh, and it's really different. So I'm glad you came back. Safe and sound. Would you welcome Pastor Janelle as she comes to speak the word? Amen. Well, why don't you have a seat and let me show you uh, some of our extensions. Maybe. We have 30 extensions. Oh, 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 maybe. There we go. Can we get some music going? Start from the top. Wait, 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 wait. Where's the music? Oh, well. Okay, well, this is Deval, King's Chapel Deval. Uh, we're right in the middle of the city. This is our church in Tagum. Uh, that's the new building. This is our church in Pantukan. They're also doing a building program. This is Osmenia, which is in the middle of the city. Those are our pastors right there. Uh, this is a little chapel in uh, ooh, Siglag. There we go. And we had a great time. Three churches all came together and worshiped the Lord. I got to speak and minister. It was powerful. We got to go to Vegan. Yeah, there's our, another church. Okay, this is going fast, and there's no music. <laughs> uh, this is another church. Those are the pastors over there in, um, I don't remember the name. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, yay. Okay, Medina and Dingras. Beautiful fields. Oh, right next, right outside the church. It was gorgeous. They have a gate that says King's Chapel, and that's their new pastor. Pastor, can't remember his name right now. <laughs> June, Pastor June. Pastor June, I remember. Brother Nestor is here. Then we traveled for an hour and a half into the mountains to Vintar, up at the mountain church. It was beautiful. The people were so uh, excited about the presence of God. Then we had an Aloha Fest in Isabella. That's the new pastor there in Isabella. Went to the Respicio Center and had an Aloha Fest. It was powerful. It had several hundred people there. Oh, there we go.
church in Sultan Kudarat, there's a river that flows, a water, a well that just comes up from the, from the earth, constantly flowing, clean water. In fact, they had somebody come and test it, and they said it was great water that can feed all of Sultan Kudarat. It, it doesn't stop. It just keeps flowing. It is awesome. God is doing great thing. Out of 30 extensions, I think we got to see 15 or 16 different extensions. Brother Nestor is the only one that came back. We went with the Delaras, uh, Miss Sister Jing, the Dumalantas. We went with uh, a lot of people that came with us from this church, Pastor Arthur and Minister Annabelle. It was powerful. Wow. I did things I've never done before. <laughs> Well, come on, let's get into the Word tonight. I got a Word for you tonight. Stand to your feet and let's get into the Word. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, starting to read in verse 14. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. Oh, but unbelieving and perverse generation, he replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I pull up with you? Bring the boy here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed from that moment. When the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked him, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for your word. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are speaking a word tonight for us, Lord God, that we can be changed and transformed by your word and by your power. Give me a freedom and a liberty of communicating your word tonight. I pray for your people that you would open up their ears to hear, their hearts to receive, their minds to understand, and their lives to be changed by your word tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You may be seated. How many of you have ever heard of the term claustrophobia? It is a fear of, uh, in, uh, of confined spaces. Now, my mom uh, told me about a time when she was in, in uh, the pyramids in Egypt and how she was just you know, crawling underground under these pyramids and got a huge case of claustrophobia. Well, while we were on our second drive all-nighter, up to Isabella, <laughs> I think it was about 10 days in, I started getting that feeling, get me out of this car now. And the Lord, when I was praying today, <laughs> Lord, and yes, last night, Lord, what do you want me to share to your people? I felt like the Lord had said that he has called us to get out of the box. You can say, get out of the boat walk on water. You can say, get out of your comfort zone. Get out of the van. Hallelujah. <laughs> Poor Pastor Arthur. I was like, I just, I just need to sit by the door. Just, just let me sit by the door, please, so I can like get out just in case. The, there are some very harrowing situations um, going 60, 70 miles per hour down a road that was like Hana, um, but then we went up a mountain and down a mountain, Hana Trail, and we would, it was Filipino drivers, hallelujah. <clears throat> so we were swerving in and out of the, the cars and the bicycles and the people in the middle of the night. And there was one time, well, actually about four times where we flew off of our chairs because the driver, you know, stopped in the middle of the highway. Oh, at one time I was awake, praise the Lord. <clears throat> and I saw him going 70 miles per hour and there's this little tricycle cart in the middle of the road and the lights were on and it was stopped. Like it had the stop lights on and everything. And I'm like, dude, dude. And I knew he couldn't speak English, but I'm like, dude, dude, <laughs> dude. And praise the Lord, he stopped. But that was after everyone fell on their butts at, on the van. God rescued us. I thank you, first of all, for praying for me. <laughs> Remember when I shared on Sunday night how you better pray hard so that I don't get a flat tire in the middle of the, of the, the Philippines? Remember I said that? Do you remember I said that? Well, it happened. 
Some of you weren't praying hard enough. No. <laughs> No, we were in the middle of the rice paddies, and we got a flat tire. Hallelujah. But you know what? It was so beautiful, and God was so gracious, and we had a great van, and they changed the flat tire, and God was there. It was powerful. Uh, I did things that I've never thought I could do, bus hitchhiking being one of them. Standing on the side of the road in the middle of the Philippines, waving down a gigantic bus going 60 miles per hour. Hey, you got two seats. Can we hop on? <laughs> I've eaten cricket. Hallelujah. Fried cricket. It was nasty. <laughs> Don't try it. It was greatly prepared. Miss Jing made it, and it was uh, beautiful, but it was nasty. And what's funny is then that night, I think the next night after we traveled all day to go up to Vintar Church, we're sitting there in the Vintar Church, and a grasshopper starts chasing me around the church. <laughs> like it's revenge of the grasshoppers. <laughs> you ate my cousin, I'm going to get you. <laughs> this was a time we had to step out of the box to do things we've never done before, get out of our comfort zone. I was speaking with one of our ministers in Oahu. I got the uh, privilege to preach there on Sunday. And she was saying, Pastor, I don't know how you could do it. I'm never going to the Philippines. I can't do that. I can't eat those things. I can't uh, have cold showers. <laughs> there is no way. And it hit me. Do we all have comfort zones and boxes that we say, God, you can use me, but only this far? God, you can only uh, use me to pray for my neighbor and they get encouraged, but you can't use me to heal the sick. You can't use me to touch a nation. You can't use me for this and for that. You can't pour your wealth through me. You can't. So many limits that we place on ourselves and on God. We put ourselves in the comfort box. When you have to sleep on, a, on the floor, when there's no toilet, and some of you have seen my Facebook, you know what I'm talking about. There's a toilet with no handle, no, <laughs> no everything. <laughs> You're like, and what is this used for? I mean, do I sit on it? How do I do this? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> that is not a good picture, honey. <laughs> no flush valve, no seat, no sink, no hot water. <sighs> okay, I'm so glad to be back in America. <laughs> but we do that. We put limits upon God. God, I'm willing to serve you, but only if I can be a greeter. God, I'm willing to serve you, but only if I get a microphone and can sing on the front. God, I'm willing to serve you, but when I open my home for Life Group, there, be, there better be at least 30 people that come and are so hungry for the Word of God that I'm going to teach. Come on. We do that. We limit God, we put him in a box, and when it doesn't happen like we expect it's going to happen, we say, well, I guess I'm not going to do it. You know, the disciples had the same issue. In fact, I think it is a human issue. <laughs> we all love to be comfortable. Come on, we buy the best beds, right? We have the carpet that is wonderful. We have the wood floors. We do everything we can to be comfortable. But God has not called us as people of God to be comfortable. Can I get an amen? He's called us to step out in faith. You see, the disciples had problems with faith. In fact, I think it was that they didn't even really understand what faith was. And by living every day with Jesus, they began to see that faith was something that they didn't really know about. And there were times in the Word of God, especially when I read this passage, it hit me that Jesus said, you of little faith. And so I began to look through the book of Matthew and the different times that Jesus said that. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 30, he's talking about how much so can I take care of you? I take care of the birds of the air. I take care of uh, the animals. I take care of them. How much more can I take care of you? 
You see, we limit God and we tend to put God in a box when it comes to our provision and our need. Throughout the Philippines, what I was constantly aware of is the poverty mentality. Waiting for someone to come from America, from Canada, someone to give them money. Then maybe I'll make it. Then I'll be okay. It was a different perspective. You know, most of them live debt-free in their homes. They don't, they don't have credit cards. <laughs> they don't have house payments. They don't have water bills. They don't have electric bills. And they're asking for money. And I'm like, wait, seriously? Do you know how much I spend a month? Do you know how much I work in order to get this money, in order to just even be here? But it's a poverty mentality. Someone else will give me money rather than God's going to open up the door. God's going to bring in the provision. And that's the same mentality that Jesus was dealing with the disciples. And he says, you of little faith, don't you know? Look at what it says there in Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. So do not worry, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all of these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them. In verse 30, if, what, if that is how God clothes the grass of the fields, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not do so much more to clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? See, the way that our faith can be attacked is through poverty, through our need, through provision. Second way that we see that disciples had little faith, we see in Matthew chapter 8, verse 26. They're in the middle of a huge storm. And they wake Jesus up and they said, Jesus, we're going to die. We're going to die. Wait, help us, help us. And what does he do? He calms the wind and the waves. It's in the middle of circumstances that we don't understand circumstances that maybe even aren't our fault, that we're doing what we think we're supposed to do, and the wind and the waves and the problems come, and we go, God, where are you? And he speaks to his disciples, and he says, you of little faith. Ooh. Third way, in Matthew 14, 31, Peter is walking on the water. Jesus comes out to the boat, and Peter says, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. And so he gets out of the water, and he's doing the impossible. And he starts sinking. He starts doubting. He starts looking at the wind and the waves. And Jesus says, you of little faith. I don't know about you, but I always thought Jesus should say, wow, you got halfway, man. Good job. <laughs> you stepped out of the boat. Good job. But he said, you have little faith. He doubted. It was the fear. What if I sink? What if this happens? What if that happens? The fourth way we see the little faith mentioned is Matthew 16, 8, where it's a very interesting passage that didn't make sense to me until I had to pray over it a lot, <laughs> where Jesus says, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees. And the disciples go, oh, he's talking about the food. We forgot the food. And he said, no, no, no. I, hello, how many people did I feed? I fed the 4,000. I fed the 5,000. Don't worry about food, but beware of the teachings of the Pharisees, the relationships that are around you, who is influencing you, who is speaking into your life, maybe even offense that happens to us. The fifth one is the one that we saw today, Matthew 17, verse 20, where they were confronted with the need for healing and deliverance, and they could not heal them. They were empowered by Jesus. Jesus had spoken to them and said, go and lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Go cast out demons. And yet when people came to them, they weren't able to heal this boy. They weren't able to cast out the demon. And instead of Jesus going, oh, well, it just comes out by fasting and prayer, he says, oh, you of little faith. You see, I think in all of those situations that we see, the five situations that Jesus brings out and identifies, he is trying to communicate that we put God in a box. That we limit God in the area of provision. We limit God in the area of our circumstances, our trauma, and our pain. We limit God in our fear. We limit God in our relationships and in our healing our bodies. We put limits around God and say, God, you can heal me this far. 
God, you can provide this far. God, you can deal with these relationships, but don't touch these ones. God, you can heal these areas of hurt in my life, but don't, don't, don't go there, God. And see, all of those areas affect our faith. How is your faith tonight? Are you putting it in a little box and saying, okay, God, you can only go this far? Because it's time to step out of the box. Amen. It's time to step out of the box. So I said, Lord, that's great. I am kind of depressed, God, all these little faith, little faith. Oh, I see myself in every single one of these little faiths. What do I do? <laughs> How do I have great faith? So I began to research, and guess what? Wow, you guys are so excited tonight. You're just like staring at me. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> guess what happens? which God always does, and Jesus always does in all of his teaching. He presents an issue and a problem, and then he gives you the solution for it. So are you ready for the solution? No, no, no. Are you ready for the solution? <laughs> we got to reveal our little faith. We got to reveal the boxes so that we can break out of them. The first one, the answer to our need, Matthew 6, 33. Jesus says, he says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and what? All these things will be added to you. Oh, he's giving us the secret of how to break out of the box of poverty. Do what? Seek him first. You see, that is a key in, in every area of our life. But when we look at it financially, God's got to meet our need. If we look to mankind, if we look to our boss, if we look to people to provide for our need, we come into the poverty mentality. We come into the box of limitations and say, God, you can only use these people to bless me. Rather than believing. Now, one of the things that we did is we went to, we had early morning prayer every morning when we were in the Philippines. Now, sometimes I talked Pastor Arthur into letting us do it at 6, since we didn't go to bed until 1. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He was gracious to me. But we prayed every morning. And, you know, we had several pastors with us. No matter what place we were at, we had the pastors of that area with us. And they got to know that Maui has to operate by faith. That, wait, wait, Maui is believing God for $50,000 a day. That's a lot of pesos. That's like a, some million pesos. <laughs> and they're like, what? You guys have to believe? Wait, wait, wait. Americans have to believe God for money? I'm like, oh, you have no idea. <laughs> we are a church of great faith. You see, it broke the concept of poverty because Maui can't meet their needs. Your boss can't meet your needs. Your family can't meet your needs. God's got to meet your needs. We must seek him first. What are your limitations of poverty or of finances or of need? Let's seek him. That increases our faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two. Can you tell I'm a little bit excited tonight? Sorry. I'm excited. Number two, we see in Matthew um, 8, 26. When they are in the middle of the storm, they wake Jesus up, and he gives them a key. He says, oh, you of little faith. <laughs> but then he says, he, he did what? He rebuked the wind and the wave, and he spoke peace. He said, peace, be still. What circumstances you're facing in your life tonight, the limitations well, I can't do this, I can't do that. My family, this problem, that problem, even things that Dr. Morocco had prayed over this tonight. What do we do? How do we break out of that box? We speak peace. We rebuke the demons, just as Dr. had us do. He didn't know I was preaching tonight. He had the pastors, what, lay hands on you and 
rebuke the demonic strongholds that are trying to come against you, the circumstances that are trying to oppress you. Men and women of God, we get the opportunity to step out in faith and rebuke the enemy. You speak to the enemy and you say, get your hands off of my family. Oh, you get your hands off of my boss. They're going to be loved by Jesus. <laughs> They're going to serve the Lord. They're going to speak life. They're going to speak blessing. And then what do you do? You speak peace into the situation. Whatever circumstance is going around you, you speak peace. That is how you can break off of circumstances that are coming against you and increase your faith. Number three. How do we increase our faith? Oh, in Matthew 14, 31, when, uh, I can't remember when, <laughs> Peter was walking on the water, and he doubted. Something that happened when Jesus picked him up, right? He says, oh, you have little faith. He brought him back into the boat, and something changed. Something shifted. They worshiped God. They worshiped Jesus. What if Peter, in the middle of walking on water, would have kept his focus on Jesus and would have worshipped him in the midst of his fear? See, that's what happened. His focus got off of Jesus, and it went to the wind and to the waves, and he began to sink. But when he kept his focus on Jesus, he walked on water. He did the impossible. His faith increased. When we worship the Lord, our perspective and our focus shifts from our frustration, our need, our problems, and it shifts to how great our God is. You see, when we worship, it increases our faith. That's why we worship and we praise God before every service, because we're breaking off the junk that has hindered us, the things that we brought in these doors. We're breaking it off, and our focus goes on God. It releases faith. It releases faith. So first of all, we see what? Seek first his kingdom. Secondly, we rebuke the wind and the waves, and we speak peace. Thirdly, we worship the Lord. When we worship him, oh, we release faith. Fourthly, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he says, Beware the yeast of the Pharisees. We've got to be careful who is speaking into our lives. Who are you listening to? Well, I'm very proud of you because you're here tonight. You want to hear the word of the Lord. See, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You know, one of the things that we did when we were in the Philippines, it was a brilliant idea. I don't know who came up with it, but Miss Sister Jing or, or um, Pastor Arthur they took Miracle on Maui, and they gave one to each and every pastor. Why? Because in the midst of their need, in the midst of their situation, whatever's going on, the need for jobs, the need for finances, family getting saved, uh, religious persecution, they need someone to speak into their life to say, you can do this. Look what God did on a little island of Maui. God can do it in Tacloban. God can do it in Isabella. God can do it in Davao. God can do it through you. God can do it through me. When we hear the word of faith being spoken and we align ourselves under people with great faith, our faith increases. Well, if God can do that through Dr. Morocco, God can do it for me. If God can send Pastor Janelle to the Philippines. Wonder what he can do for me. Come on. We align ourselves with great faith. We break off the doubt. We break off the yeast of the people around us who are speaking death, who are speaking doubt, who are speaking fear, who are speaking poverty over us. We've got to get around people of faith. You know, one of the things that I did, oh, I, they were a little bit scared of me. <laughs> I scare people. I, it's that anointing of Dr. Morocco. <laughs> the one thing I did before we, we left every church, of course, we prayed for the pastor and we prayed for the church. We ca called in the harvest. But I asked each pastor, I said, so what's your vision? Three years time, what are you going to do for God? 
They're like, well, you know, the vision for the Philippines is 100 churches and 7,000 people and 500 life groups. I said, that's great, and I'm awesome. I'm excited about that. But what are you going to do? What is your faith? In Maui, I'm believing for a life group in every single neighborhood. We're believing for how many life groups on this island? A thousand life groups. So what can they do? Hey, in Maui, we got to believe and have faith. We got to have great faith. What can you do? Where's your inspiration of faith? Hey, are you hanging around people who say, you can be a life group leader? Hey, you can be a part of a ministry. Hey, have you tried stretching out your hand in faith and in ministering in the E-team or in transformation or in bus ministry? Hey, have you tried this ministry and that ministry? Have you extended your reach of faith and gotten out of the box and done something great? Or are you listening to people who say, oh, you can't do that. You don't have a good enough voice. No one wants to hear you say anything. Get around people of great faith. That's number four. And number five from our passage tonight. How do we deal with healing, with unbelief, with demonic? Oh, we fast and pray. It doesn't say it in the NIV, but it says it in the King James Version and the New American Standard Version. This kind comes only out by fasting and praying. Do you know when we fast and when we pray, we are increasing our faith? You know, when you're worshiping, you're increasing your faith. When you hear the Word of God, you're increasing your faith. I don't know about you, but I need the Word of God every day. Every day personally, and I need to get in church. I can, I remember I went to Missouri one time. I stayed with Pastor John and Jamie. That was years ago. <laughs> and uh, they didn't have Wednesday night service. Nobody had Wednesday night service. People didn't believe in going to church except for one time on Sunday. And can I tell you, by Thursday morning, I was mean. And I was praying and reading my Bible. I was doing all of the things that I normally do, but I wasn't in the house of the Lord. It changes things. Because when we're in the house of the Lord and we hear a man, a woman of God speaking on great faith, it shifts our perspective to begin to believe God that he can do something in my life. He can do something in your life. He can use us somehow, some way, tomorrow. He can use us to pray. He can use us to fast. Oh, we can be people of great faith. Do you believe that? You know, this passage of scripture, when I first started researching it, I got kind of depressed. Because there's all of these areas that I needed to increase my faith in. But I felt like the Lord said, I'm going to give you keys on how to increase your faith in these areas. But you do it by step by step. You do it step by step. You keep worshiping. You keep trusting. You keep speaking life. You keep speaking peace. You keep Walking in faith. You keep tithing. You keep giving. You keep pushing the envelope. Get out of the box. You see, God has empowered you. God has anointed you. But he's waiting for us to do something. He's waiting for you to rise up and be people of great faith. Like the Syrophoenician woman like the centurion who believed the word of God and acted on it. That is what kind of people we are as KC. Whether you know it or not, your faith has inspired thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people all over the world. People throughout the Philippines know you. They have seen your faith, and they want to be like you. So it's time, people, men and women of God. We're going to rise up. We're going to break out of the box. We're going to show this island how great our God is. We're going to rise up in faith and rise up in power and rise up anointing. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Doctor. <laughs>